You are listening to the Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast, the show that guides you on your holistic lifestyle journey to a healthy body, mind, and soul aligned with nature. Hello and welcome to episode number 32 of the Holistic Lifestyle Guide Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, and that is the daily routine. But you might think that having a daily routine means that you can't be spontaneous. So I'm going to talk about how you can have a daily routine and how you can plan things in your life but still be spontaneous. So having a daily routine has been proven to be good for our health physically and mentally. And using a planner is another good thing to do every day in order to be successful and to reach your goals and to get things done. So overall Daily routines and planning are two of the best things that you can do overall for your life. So everybody should adopt these simple good habits and uh, I'm going to give some tips for people that don't like to plan or that don't like to do the same things every day. There are ways around that because there's a lot of people out there who value spontaneity and I do enjoy spontaneity as well even though I am a planner at heart and I make I make products that help people plan things and I use my planners so I'm one of those uh, people that kind of sees both sides I can see the middle I'm I'm totally for spontaneity and variety and I'm also totally for planning so what if you are one of those people who would rather fly by the seat of your pants you know you just want to do things as you feel like it What if you want to do whatever you want, whenever you want, without having to follow a checklist or rules or guidelines or plans? So let's get right into it. Since I've struggled with this as well, um, and I've been obsessed with planners, and I also value my freedom and not having obligations, I feel like I have a really good position to help people on both sides of this. Uh, A lot of times I have bought or created so many planners that I couldn't even use them. Like I just had so many of the same thing. I am so guilty of buying or creating a planner and then simply not even using it because I too, I end up just doing whatever I want whenever I want sometimes. So I have also struggled with routines and I know they are necessary to live a healthy lifestyle and I talk about it all the time, but sometimes I just don't feel like doing the things that I put on my schedule to do every morning or every night. Sometimes life gets in the way and I can't do any of it. And you just have to be okay with that because nobody follows routines and schedules 100% according to plan. Yes, they do work better when they are done consistently, but anything is better than nothing. So I want to talk a little bit about traveling because traveling is one of the things that causes people to not be able to follow their schedule or their their routine. It's almost impossible to stick to a schedule or a routine when you're traveling. And this is one of the reasons why traveling is considered stressful. Even though it's fun, it's still a disruption from the regular routine. This is why it's common for people to experience things like insomnia and stomach aches and constipation even while they're traveling because the body needs routine in order to function properly. So going on a vacation is fun, but your body might hate you for it. When you get home from a trip, it's often when you'll come down with a cold because of a disruption in your normal daily routine that will weaken your immune system. This has happened to me Dozens of times. I love going to music festivals and I love camping and almost every time I would get home from a camping trip or a festival, well especially the festivals because you get less sleep and you're eating crappy food and you're dancing and singing and all that and so I would always get like a sinus infection or a cold or at least a sore throat. I would lose my voice and I would feel really tired. I I would sleep for like 10 hours a day for like a couple days after getting home from one of those. So this is a sign that while we love having fun and doing random varieties of activities, the body doesn't like it. I mean, 
Dancing is great, yes, but for three days straight, your body is probably going to be crying when you get home. So that's something that you have to find a balance to. And actually, I haven't been getting sick this last two years of going to music festivals, which is very strange with, you know, COVID going around. I haven't been sick at all in two years, at all. Not even not even a sore throat or losing my voice, which is weird because I would always get those. And honestly, I don't know why. I, I think it might be because I'm just, I've been living healthier longer. Um, I mean, I, I always have lived healthy, but over the last couple of years, I've really gone double down on everything. So I, you know, I'm, all the things that I do are intensified and I think that has helped my immunity. But most people, when they travel, they're probably going to get sick when they get home or at least feel run down. So um, there's some things that you can do, and I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute about traveling specifically. So uh, um, being flexible and allowing room for spontaneity is something that you need to know some tricks to do it. And then you can make it all possible at the same time with planning and using routines. So the first thing that you can do of the tips that I have for you is to allow yourself plenty of free time. So daily routines are mostly just a morning routine, a routine and a nighttime routine, both of which they might only need to take as little as 10 minutes. So of course more is better, but if you really hate routine that much, you can do 10 minutes, which still leaves many hours in your day to be spontaneous. I like to say that the morning and the nighttime routines are like the bookends of your day. So whatever you do in the middle of the day doesn't matter as long as you have the morning and the night, you know, 10 minutes of those. So then the second tip I have for you is to go ahead and take lots of vacations and don't let it stop you from taking vacations. You can still decide on a whim to fly across the country and, and you can still give yourself 10 minutes every morning and night to do your routines. These will also help your body feel less stressed. So if you start your day and end your day with something familiar and comfortable, your body will adjust to travel much more easily. So try not to schedule so much on all of your vacation days. Make it even, if you can, make it so that like maybe even the first half of the day that you get there, you're just relaxing and you, you know, getting sunlight is important, especially if you're traveling across time zones, that will help with jet lag. So if you travel and you're able to get out in the sun when you get there, unless it's dark when you get there, but if you're able to get some sunlight right away and do some earthing or grounding, so stand on the earth with your bare feet as much as you can, that will really help your body to adjust. So that's something that you can do in the morning or right when you first get there. And then also before you go to bed every night, whenever you're going back to your hotel or something, do something that's close to your routine something familiar to you. And then um, another thing I wanted to say is, well, this is kind of like a tip, but I did already mention it, is that is to think of the routines as the, the bookends of your day, a great beginning and a great end to your day. That's all you really need to benefit from a daily routine and still having plenty of wiggle room in the middle. So think of it in percentages, like 10% of your morning and 10% of your night is all you need and that's only 20%. That leaves you 80% to do as you wish. So when you're on vacation or even when you're home, 80% of your time, you know, is yours to be free with or to do all the things that you have to do, such as go to work, go to school, take care of the kids, do your homework or whatever. And then, you know, really just 10% of the morning and night is all you need for routines. It's, that is the magic, um, magic of it is you can just do that little bit and it'll still work. So the next tip I have for you is to create routines that you love. So naturally you will want to do things if you enjoy them. So don't put anything on your list that you know you will not have motivation to do. So 
you, you, this can be easy if you have a list of daily routine ideas, and I will share that with you later. I do have a list of things that I can name off for you. And then the next thing on the list is to create short overlapping routine activities. So as I mentioned earlier, you can do 10 routine activities if they are short and you can squeeze them into a 10 minute time slot and do each one for a minute. You can even do a few of them at the same time, shortening the overall time. For example, you can drink a cup of tea while you are journaling, or you can watch the sunrise while doing yoga. Um, that's a great way to do it. That's one of the things that I do um, is overlap a lot. Um, so one of my morning routines is to write in a, gr a gratitude journal and also to drink tea. So I grab my tea and I sit down and I write down and I do my gratitude journal. So that way, you know, I'm, I'm killing two birds with one stone there and it helps me to get going on my day quicker. I'm not that I'm rushing though, because you know, you can't really rush through a cup of hot tea. <laughs> you kind of sip it as soon as it cools off. And you know, for gratitude, it's really good to sit and think about that slowly. So this doesn't mean you're rushing. It just means, you know, taking your favorite activities and seeing if you can do some of them at the same time. So another thing on my list here is to do your routine activities anytime you want. This kind of con contradicts what I just said, but if you are really struggling to stick to a morning or nighttime routine, you can still do the same activities, but just do them whenever you want. This probably won't give you the same benefits as a consistent routine would, but doing a healthy habit a few times a month is better than not doing it at all. So here is a list I'm going to read through of some daily routine ideas that you can mix and match to find a routine that works for you. And of course, you can think of your own. And like I said, you can um, do ones that make you happy. Don't just do ones because they're on the list. So the morning routine ideas, I'm gonna go through the morning routine ideas now. The first one is to write down your dreams. And that is something that not many people do or even think of ever doing, but it's, it's a great way to access your subconscious and get to know, you know, what's going on with you. And I actually have a, a dream journal that gives you pages to do that with and gives journal prompts and helps you with that process. So I will leave a link down below in the show notes to check that out if you're interested. Another great morning routine is meditation. And in Ayurveda, they talk about meditation being better to do in the morning. So there's a time of the morning that they say is the best for that. And that is early, early morning, like between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. And I know that's a time when most people are not awake. Most people don't want to get up that early. But if you have to get up that early or if you don't have a set schedule and you can play around with your morning and nighttime times, then give that a shot if you are a morning person um, and do meditation early in the morning. Of course, any time that you can do meditation is better because it's, it's so beneficial any time really. It's just easier to do in the morning. I myself do it at night before I go to bed, but I, I hear all the time that early, early morning is the best time for that. Another great morning routine is yoga. This is something that I do in the evenings usually, but this is another example of that. Um, it takes me a long time to get going and I don't like to do activities early in the morning, but a lot of people do say that doing yoga in the morning is a great idea. Another great thing you can do in the morning is watch the sunrise. Um, this is always not, it's not always possible when you live near trees or a, a hill or, you know, whatever reason is keeping you from seeing the sunrise. I can't see it myself because I live surrounded by hills and trees. So I don't even see the sunrise until, you know, it's, and at least an hour after it's came up. And then also um, on the flip side of that is watching the sunset at night. It's a great way. I'll get into that again when I do the night routines, but um, if you can do both in the same day, 
well, obviously in the same day, but if you can do both of them, then that's amazing for your circadian rhythm and your health. Another morning routine you can do is write in a journal. And of course, I talk about journaling all the time. So I always say, you know, whenever you can do it, whenever works for you, get it in there. Um, but writing in a journal in the morning is a great idea for certain reasons, especially if you're doing morning pages or anything like that where you're still half awake, that's a great time to do journaling especially. And I like to do gratitude journaling in the morning because that's when, you know, you're starting your day off on the right foot. And that's a really great mindset to get into in the morning is being grateful. Another good morning routine to do is to plan your day. Sometimes I talk about doing this the night before and that also works. But planning your day is something that like if you can't do it at night, then doing it in the morning is the next best thing. And it's also good to do it at all because if you just get up and 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 decide to, or not even decide but just randomly do things without really having a plan, you're probably not going to be too productive. The next morning routine I have is to go for a walk. So that is something that they always mention because it's it's a great way to get your digestive system going. It's a great way to get your nature in and to get your sunlight for the day. So if you can go for a walk in the morning, that's one of the best things you can do for a morning routine. Doing affirmations is a great thing to do as well. Um, those can be done anytime, really. Drinking tea or drinking lemon water in the morning. I prefer tea because I have heard and I have, I have my teeth are, you know, showing signs of acid, uh, whatever it's called, where, you know, if you drink too much soda or something, it'll eat away at your teeth enamel. And although I don't drink soda anymore, um, lemon water does the same thing. It's an acid, so it will wear down the enamel on your teeth. And that's one of the reasons why I don't drink lemon water in the morning. But people say that it's good for your digestion. But I think um, you have to make your own call about that because I, my teeth are pretty important. I don't, they're really healthy and I don't want to screw them up. Um, other than the enamel being worn off, I mean, who knows <laughs> what else is going to happen because of that, but I want to preserve what I got. So I start my day with tea, herbal tea. Another good morning routine is dry skin brushing. This is an Ayurvedic thing. You might not have heard of this before. So this is something that you can do to get your circulation going and also to move your lymph system. So your lymph system has no pump and that only works when we do activities. If we are, you know, if you're exercising and dry skin brushing is really good for that too. And because you start dry brushing your your hands and your feet first, and then you go up and you work your way towards your heart. And that is what gets your lymph moving in the right direction. So you can do dry skin brushing with an actual brush that's made for that, or you can get these special gloves. They're called Garshana gloves. And um, so those are an Ayurveda thing. So you probably haven't heard of that before, but you can get those in health food stores or the health section of grocery stores. They usually have them. Another Ayurvedic morning routine is tongue scraping. So this might sound kind of gross, but if you ever look at your tongue when you first wake up in the morning, there's probably going to be a coating on it. Now, I hope you don't get grossed out by what I'm about to say, but that coating is toxins. And in Ayurveda, they call it AMA, A-M-A. And that is a buildup of all the toxins that have gone through your body overnight. Gross. And you don't want that in your body anymore. <laughs> so to get that out, you can do tongue scraping. And this works best with a copper tongue scraper. There, there are plastic ones, but I don't like them. I like the ones that are copper because they're antibacterial and they're easier to clean. And you can buy tongue scrapers anywhere. Another good morning routine is exercise. And that's a general way to say it, but you can also do yoga. And like I said, going for a walk, any type of exercise that you prefer. Another good morning routine is to read. 
this is probably better for someone that has a lot of free time because I, I really can't picture people that are busy sitting down to read in the morning. Um, it's kind of a hard thing to do because you're usually, you know, trying to rush through everything that you have to do. But if you can, reading a book is a great thing to do in the morning because your mind is still calm and it's easier to read and focus on a book when your mind is calm. Another thing you can do is to walk barefoot on the earth, otherwise known as earthing or grounding. And I mentioned that briefly a little bit ago, but that's a great way to start your morning. Working on a creative hobby. So this is something that is not a lot of people do in the morning, especially because like I said, they're usually busy rushing around trying to get things done. But if you can, if you have the time, working on a creative hobby would be a great way to start your morning. And the last tip I have for you for morning routines is to do visualization. This is usually done while you're meditating or around the time that you're journaling too. And that's to just sit and visualize what you want your dream life to be. That's a great way to get your manifestations set off on the right foot in the morning. So now I'm gonna move on to the nighttime routines and these are my favorite nighttime routines. So some of these will be repeats because a lot of these work great for morning or night. And the first couple ones are, the, are like that and that is meditation. And like I said, I do meditation at night because I think for some people it's just easier. Um, I The only reason I don't meditate in the morning is because I'm still so tired that I just, I, I feel too much like I could just fall over and fall back asleep. So just try whatever works for you. I just, I love meditation at night because it's, it sets me in the right, you know, on the right foot to go to, be, to go to bed, to go to sleep. I can sleep so much better if I meditate first. And I'm also a little more calmer at night. I, I, I reach a point where after so long, well, it's usually after I have been journaling that I will start to feel that inner peace. Like the day is done and now it's just a calm. All that's left is calm. And that's why meditating at night is so good for me. And that might work for you too. Another good nighttime routine is to do some gentle yoga poses. So this obviously isn't going to be some of the strenuous ones. It's going to be just more like stretching. So stretching is a great thing to do before you go to bed. And I mentioned this earlier, but watching the sunset is a great nighttime routine. This helps to reset your circadian rhythm and get you winding down for sleep. And like I said, you might not be able to see the sunset. I can't see it at all with my hills and trees behind me. They're literally right up against the back. So my backyard is a hill and I can't see the sun for the last hour that it's down. But if you can see it somehow, you might have to drive somewhere, but that kind of defeats the purpose. If you have to drive somewhere to see the sunset, then you know, you gotta drive home and that's a stimulating activity. So if you can somehow maybe walk somewhere to see the sunset, that might be a little better, although walking is stimulating as well. So that's a tough call. Hopefully you're in a place where you can see the sunset. And then another great nighttime routine, of course, is writing in a journal. And this is something that I advocate for any time that you can get it in there. But I prefer to do it at night because I feel less rushed. I feel like I, and also, you know, the, the ways that you journal are more conducive to nighttime because the brain dump journal type is, of course, you have to do that at night. That's getting yourself, getting your brain ready to go to bed. Like there's no point of brain dumping in the morning because you're still, you don't have anything to get rid of. You know? So writing in a journal at night is one of the best things you can do for your health. Another great nighttime routine is to drink a cup of tea. And I do this every night as well as every morning. And so you kind of want to keep an eye on what the tea has in it. Of course, do things that are relaxing like chamomile or lemon balm or, you know, things like that that are relaxing. Um, uh, oil massage, that's the next one I have on my list. And that is an uh, Ayurveda, another Ayurveda tip because what oil massaging does is it helps to ground you. 
And that's a great thing to do before going to bed. Now, I have heard, and I think you can do whatever you want with this, but a lot of times they say to do the oil massage in the morning. And that's actually part of a, a typical Ayurveda morning routine. And I have done that, but I... And then they say you're supposed to take a shower like maybe 20 minutes after you put the oil on. And because oil is supposed to collect dirt, it's supposed to absorb and, and pick up the dust, the dirt particles, and then you wash it all off. And then you don't need to use lotion because Ayurveda says not to use soap. They say just to use water. So you put the oil on, the oil takes the dirt away, and then you rinse the oil off. A little bit I mean you're not scrubbing it off like you're trying to get it off but you're just you know you're just standing under the water and so that is what Ayurveda says you you know what all you need to do in the morning but I feel personally that that's kind of a waste of oil um, I prefer to do it at night and and some people might disagree with me on this because putting the oil on at night you might say, well, gross, then your pajamas are going to get oily. <laughs> but I don't put a lot on. In fact, I put it on and rub it in and you can't even hardly, you know, it's not like you could get it on your clothes. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not that much. It's just a small amount. It's just enough to make you calm. It's grounding. So I, I like to do that at night. Another great nighttime routine is to read a book. And this is what I do. I do this in between going to bed and journaling. So I will, or actually meditation. I do journaling first, then I do meditation, and then I read a book. And honestly, I'm so tired after I get done meditating that I usually only have enough energy to, or you know, I'm only in, awake enough to read maybe uh, a page or two. So whatever you can do. And that's a great time to read right before bed. The next one on my list for the nighttime routine is to take a bubble bath. This is probably something that a lot of people already do because taking a bath is very calming and relaxing and you wouldn't really want to take a bath in the morning. I mean, you could, but it might make it might delay your, you know, waking up. You might be too tired. So, I like taking baths at night for that purpose. And especially when you can do fun things like lighting candles, burning incense, um, maybe even bringing a book into the bath if you can, if you can somehow not get it wet. Another thing you can do at night for a nighttime routine is to turn off your electronics. So this is something that I do starting around, well, first of all, it starts with sunset. My nighttime routine always starts at sunset. Um, depending on the time of the year, if it's winter, I will usually eat dinner after dark, but in the summer, I don't usually eat anything after dark because it gets dark so late. But I'm turning off the electronics. It's something I usually do about two hours before I go to bed. So electronics includes um, phones, TVs, tablets, laptops, computers, any of those sorts of things, video games. Um, but there are some things you can do and the whole point of turning them off is to avoid the blue light So you can use a blue light blocking app. I use FLUX. It's called flux I use that on my computer, but I still do turn it off after you know a couple of hours before I'm actually wanting to go to bed I will turn that off, but when it's dark in the winter early That's when you need to have those blue light blocking apps and then, of course, you know, being on your phone late is just uh, so horrible for your health. Being on your phone even early in the morning is bad for your health, too, because you don't want to be distracting yourself with everything that's being demanded of you. People messaging you, emails, uh, you know, reading, scrolling mindlessly. You don't want to even get involved in that until after you've done your routines. So here is another fun nighttime routine, and that is to sit in front of a fire. This might not be possible for you if you don't have a fireplace or if you don't have a, a fire pit in your backyard or if you have no access to a, make a fire in any way. But if you can, do that. Um, this is something that our ancestors did, and you know that's all they had to do at night was sit around a fire. And the fire is, of course, amber-colored, and so that will help your melatonin production help you get ready for sleep 
If you can't sit in front of a fire, using candles is a great way to do that. That's what I do while I'm writing in my journal and all that fun stuff. Um, using a re relaxing essential oils is another thing that you can do at night. Um, like lavender is a really good one. Um, you can take them and put them in a diffuser, like a couple drops, and that will diffuse it into the air. Or you can use a carrier oil. Actually, lavender works good as a carrier, a carrier oil by itself. Another thing you can do at night is to listen to calming music. Or I'm going to add almost any kind of sounds, really. I was going to say music, but sounds. Like binaural beats is a good thing to listen to at night because they get you into the alpha mode or the alpha state. Um, listening to any type of guided meditations. Um, visualization videos those are some good things to listen to at night another good thing to do at night is to work on a relaxing hobby so if you have a hobby that's relaxing or calming that's a great time to do it like if you're into adult coloring if you're into crocheting or knitting or any type of hobby where or you know, even journaling a lot of people do junk journaling or, you know, something where you're putting together a craft. Crafting, that's a great idea to do at night. And then my last nighttime routine that I'm going to talk about today is to make a to-do list for the next day. So I did mention um, planning your day in the morning routine section, but I honestly think that it's better to do that at night the night before. Why is that? Because it helps you to relax before bed that you know everything is planned and you didn't forget anything and you're not going to forget anything because you've given yourself you know the time whatever you think of something you have to do the next day you write it down and you can make your to-do list for the next day you can make it be like a constant thing you have running you know just whenever you think of it add it and that way by the end of the day you'll have your list done and chances are you're not going to think of any new things. If you do, you can maybe keep like a little printable to-do list and lay it next to your bed. I mean, I say printable, but it could be any type of... Just because I make printable to-do lists, I like to use those because you can stick them to a clipboard or you can make a binder out of them and hole punch them and put them into a binder. That's how I make my to-do lists. So you can put that by your bed if you really do come up with more things to do, but making sure that you have your to-do list done before you go into your bedroom, that's a great thing to do. So like I mentioned, I have printable daily routine planners and to-do lists and things like that. So if you're interested in getting some of those, I will leave a link down below in the show notes for my daily routine planner. I have a couple of them. I have one that specifies morning and night, and it actually does give some ideas. Um, they might be some of the same ideas I mentioned in this episode, but they might be new ones because I'm always thinking of new ones. So um, I will leave a link down to that and you can check that out. And if you're on a super tight budget, these are great, you know, because they're only a couple dollars. So actually, I'm not finished with this episode yet. <laughs> I didn't even get to the second half, which is planning. So I'm going to now switch from the daily routine section to planning and how to plan if you want to stick with, you know, your spontaneous variety. So the first tip for planning spontaneously is to plan loosely. One example of this is to write down the things you want to do in a month. Then give yourself all month to get everything done without breaking down exactly when to do each thing. You don't have to plan down to the hour if you don't want to. You can make sections in your planner like things to get done by Saturday or start these things in November. That way you can still be productive, but you are giving yourself some leeway. This method requires more willpower, but also allows more freedom of what you choose to do each day. So that's one tip if you want to plan, but also be spontaneous. Another tip is to stick some fun things in there. So planning can be fun if you have a lot of enjoyable tasks on your list. And um, 
you know, to-do lists are usually made up of chores and obligations, but that doesn't have to be all they include. When you have fun stuff on there, interspersed with cleaning and errands, it can make planning bearable. Like, you can put some fun stuff on there, like, um, you know, watching YouTube videos or whatever else you want to do. So that will help make it fun. Also, another tip is to make big goals a part of your plan. This is when planning gets fun, when it's revolved around a major life goal. This is also the stuff that is made for planning. So find your bucket list and pick a goal, a big goal, and break it down into little, littler goals. And then suddenly planning will become inspiring and motivational. It won't be dreadful and monotonous anymore. You can get creative. You can use bullet journals. Bullet journals are a great example of this because in a bullet journal, they are just as much about creativity as they are about what you are writing. So you can make even a boring colorless planner become like an art project. You can find new creative ways to write things down, to organize them, and to check things off as you do them. Um, so I, like I said, if you're in need of a planner, I have planners of all types, including meal planners, healthy eating planners, healthy lifestyle planners. I've even got student planners if you're somebody that goes to school or takes courses online. I have blog planners for entrepreneurs that have a blog or a business. I've got, of course, self-care planners, which is one of my favorite things in the world is self-care. I've got law of attraction and manifestation planners. Um, I've got different styles of basic planners with daily and hourly, weekly and monthly planning sheets. So I will leave a link down below so you can check those out. Um, this has been a long episode. <laughs> I really love talking about daily routines and planning, so I figured this was going to be a long one. Um, so uh, I'm going to end this now because it, it is kind of long and I hope you learned a few tricks for keeping the fun, spontaneous parts of your life intact while still benefiting from the daily routines and planning. So thank you so much for listening. And if you've enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it on social media. If you know anybody that loves daily routines and planning or, you know, somebody that is spontaneous, but you think that they could benefit from planning, but still be spontaneous. And to keep up with everything that I'm doing, you can find all the links at holisticlifestyleguide.com. Thank you again, and I will see you in the next episode.